So let me. All right. Welcome, everybody. Today, we are diving in with our new Director of Investor Relations, Ariel Thompson, but we're really talking about here, what does it mean to have someone in the investor relations role with our organization specifically, but more broadly as well? Like, what, what is investor relations? What do they do? Why is this an essential piece of your investing journey as an investor, as someone who maybe is learning about a new type of investing or diversifying your portfolio into real estate? Um, so join me. We're going to look at the three things that Ariel Thompson brings to the team, especially, but just the way that her mind works a little bit here. So, Ariel, welcome so much. Thank you so much for joining us here and at Good Egg Investments. Yes, thank you so much for having me. I'm trying. I, I'm like overwhelmed by just such the kind words um, from you both, but also from all of the investors that I've connected with so far. I've had some mornings with meetings, so I'm very excited to kind of jump in and, and share a little bit about myself and what we are trying to do here at Good Egg. Can we start by on this slide? Who oh, who is this adorable little dog right here? <laughs> <laughs> that is Bailey. She is seven years old, but she's five pounds. So um, she has all of the energy of a giant um, thinking she can walk up to anyone, uh, but she is a small little thing. So that is our um, investor relations. What associate is what you said? That's Anna. right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're thrilled to have ba we're, we're thrilled to have you, Ariel, but potentially even more thrilled to have Bailey on the team. I can't wait to meet her someday in person. But Ariel, you and I had a chance to sit down um, in person not that long ago when you were here in the Bay Area. We talked about all sorts of things, uh, a little bit about your background and how you got into investor relations. Um, so give give everybody here um, on the call, everybody who's listening a little bit some of the highlights of you know why investor relations I always love to hear why people choose a particular role or a field what is it about re investor relations that really called to you and how did you kind of get to where you are now yeah yeah that's a that's a great question and it's honestly in full transparency it's something I kind of fell into right um it's interesting uh I started my career out which will uh, I know you guys sent something up, I'll probably reiterate, but started my career at a Goldman Sachs, um, very high pressure, high stakes environment. Um, and I found this kind of uh, balance between connecting with people and our investors and also connecting with the numbers. So it was interesting because this part of finance gives you a little bit of creativity. I was able to tell a story with the numbers and really explain to folks what we're doing, um, what we plan to do, and also connect with our investors who are putting their hard earned do dollars um, to work and trusting us with that. So it was a great way to kind of marry together um, that people, person, um, but also make numbers sound a little less boring um, and a little less scary. So uh, it was a great kind of combination of two of my interests. And you know what, what struck me in our um, conversation in person was not only your passion for finances and investing, but also your natural zest for life and your passion for personal development. I mean, you can see in the photos here, you've traveled all over, you're clearly, you love food and you love <laughs> the arts and all these things. Tell us, I'm curious what out of all these places or maybe more that are not pictured here, um, what's maybe the one of your favorite places that you've traveled to? Ah, that one is easy. My favorite place is actually not pictured, but um, the red scarf and the one uh, to the right in the middle, those are both taken in China. Um, but I would say my favorite place is Suzhou. And uh, my friend who's actually in the picture with me there, she, uh, we, I met her while studying abroad um, in college when I went to Fudan University in Shanghai. And uh, we hit it off immediately. And that was in maybe, oh, 2013. So we've been best friends since then and traveled back and forth, but she's from Suzhou. And uh, Suzhou, they call like the Venice of China. Um, amazing people, amazing food, and just um, beautiful scenery, like lights and water. And I, I love it. It's There's such a warmth there um, that I enjoy. So that is probably the fa my favorite place so far that I've traveled to. And everybody listening, here's a fun fact. Believe it or not, Ariel speaks better Mandarin than I do. Mm, no. Yeah. She's no. like, when, when I'm like 
I started out, I mean, obviously I was born in Beijing and up until four years old when I lived there, I was obviously, you know, a little talk, you know, always talking, chatty, know it all. And I didn't learn English until I was four, but quickly assimilated and then kind of started over the years losing everything. And um, I tried to speak a lot of Mandarin with my kids up until they were like six or seven, but then I got stuck with it because I wanted to be able to teach them all these, you know, bigger lessons in life that I didn't know the words for. And so now they've lost it all too. But it's so impressive, Ariel. I mean, yeah, that you have such a command of the Mandarin uh, language and the Chinese culture as well, that you have that natural passion and interest. And I really want to draw out that connection to investor relations too. I mean, someone who is is excited to explore different people around the world and cultures and try new things. And it's just like this, this, I, what I appreciate about it, about all of that and how it, I think it helps our investors and is that you're willing to kind of like feel and experience the path of different people. And I think that that comes across in the way that you now can relate to more people. So I'd love to transition a little bit about how you think about investor relations um, and how that comes across. Um, so first, oh, let me go back here. Um, the first point I want to bring out and that you told me is a, a major pillar of the things that you've learned in the past 10 years of working in investor relations from really big firms, high pressured startups, all yeah. kinds of different groups um, serving different investors uh, is transparency and engagement. Can you tell us a little bit about how, why you feel that this is a pillar of investor relations? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, transparency and engagement, it speaks for itself, but then to dive a little bit deeper, um, people or well, different firms don't practice it as much as they should, right? And especially when we're dealing with people's life, you know, and your life, meaning your, your hard earned dollars, your trust, um, the anxiety that comes around that. So one of the biggest things that I've seen over the years is just taking that time to engage with the exact person I'm talking to, not just a broad statement, but kind of doubling down, reaching out and connecting and answering questions as honestly as we can. Um, we're talking about, you know, I, I've seen billions of dollars and I've seen tens, you know, of thousands of dollars, and it should all be treated the same with the same level of integrity and the same level of engagement and, and honesty. Um, so that's one of the things that I found over my career that I was able to do. And one of my favorite uh, compliments I received back at Goldman Sachs was my ability to find common ground with people. Um, and that's something that I've carried with me. Um, and to kind of tie back to what you said, Susan, I appreciate you just um, tying those things together because that's what makes it fun for me is to really put myself in that position and to understand the the mindset behind why these questions are being asked, what's the underlying thing here, and, and taking that feedback and seeing how can we better um, articulate and better communicate with our investors so that that trust is maintained. Um, it's huge. You know, it feeds into everything that we do. And it also feeds into um, just our overall brand and what we stand behind as a firm. Absolutely. Absolutely. I like hearing you, you know, make that bridge between transparency and trust and transparency and engagement. This is, these are like very, very uh, important relationships to all of us at Good Egg, and you would hope that that would be the case at other firms. Have you ever encountered any challenges in developing that engagement or transparency in the other firms that you've worked for? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. You know, from, from both the, you know, sometimes there's a fear of, um, being able to have these hard conversations, right? And the hard conversations are the conversations I run, run towards because they are difficult, yes, but they they are wrapped up in so much um, feedback that can really help change the trajectory of what we're doing and our relationship with our investors. Um, so that has always been a difficult conversation because advocating on behalf of, um, you know, our investors to maybe some of our senior portfolio managers at my previous roles is difficult, you know, because people have in their mind what they want to do, but it's important to hear what our investor base wants to see, you know, and what they want to hear from us. So um, it's absolutely difficult. But again, like I said, it's, it's something that I welcome because we can only get better if we have these hard conversations. And if we take a step back and say, this seems to be a trend, you know, maybe we should re, uh, 
um, think how we're engaging folks and maybe um, sending out just the raw data is not exactly what they want to hear because we're getting more questions. So it definitely helps you take a step back and really um, think about how we need to engage and grow with our investor base. I want to pull just one thing out for everybody who's listening or watching. Um, one thing that Arielle just said was um, she doesn't run from hard conversations. She runs toward them. And you know who else once upon a time said that to me? Julie Lamb. <laughs> and when we first partnered up, she said, I don't run from those hard questions and those hard conversations. I love those. She's like, I live for those questions. I want to know what investors are thinking and I want to engage with them. And I love, Ariel, that you have that same spirit as well. And to all the investors listening, I mean, you know, Julie and I, as much as we want, we can't be everywhere at once. And we value every single one of you, every one of you in the world to us. And we wanted to make sure that there was somebody in this seat because as investor relations, Ariel is, you know, at the front lines. She's the one, the first one answering all of your questions and interacting with all of you. And Julie and I and the rest of the team may jump in at some point as it makes sense, but really Ariel is your main point of contact. And so we always want to make sure that whoever sits in that seat is the best representation, not only of the two of us, but of the brand as a whole. And so hopefully you're starting to see how Ariel is, is thinking about these things and seeing how she aligns with both Julie and I and the brand. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and those conversations, like we said, they're, they're difficult, but um, they're needed. And right now I'm in the position where I'm kind of reaching out to some folks and I'm having a little bit of those hard conversations. And the wonderful thing is, if I don't know the answer, I will go find it. And that's and it's helping me kind of jump in quicker. So, again, it's, it's the best way to learn. And I'm that's one of the things that really drew me to not only the firm, but the team is that, you know, it was the, the desire to kind of rip the top off and really see how we can move things forward. So, yeah. And that's the thing. We will never have all the answers. None of us try as hard as we may. We will never have all the answers 100 percent of the time. And anybody who tells you otherwise is just, you know, they're faking it or they're lying to you because nobody will have all those answers. And the fact that, you know, we're able to tell you that and say, you know what, actually, let me come back to you with a full the full context or a deeper, more meaningful answer. Um, I think for me as, a, as an investor myself, I love when people tell me that because it means they really care about giving me the right information, which I know you're going to talk about here in a minute, so I don't want to steal your thunder, <laughs> but let's move on because this is your second pillar. Um, so tell us a little bit about psychology and empathy and what that means to you. Yeah, yeah. Um, two things that like uh, I say, investor relations is profoundly human. It is a lot of um, understanding the mindset, as I said earlier, and the psychology around money and people's relationship with money. You know, people, we all have different introductions, whether it was through um, parental figures or our own experience, what we were told, um, what the status quo was. We all have a different relationship with money and with investing. Um, and it's important to remember that. It's important to remember to meet people where they are so we can help bridge those gaps to get them to where they want to go. And that takes understanding that mindset, but also also empathizing, you know, um, and, and empathy is huge for me because again, these aren't just cold, hard numbers. There are people behind those numbers, you know, we're people on the other side of those numbers too. Um, so it's important to create that personal relationship and really understand someone's goals or where they're having some um, difficulties understanding or confusion that may be on our part. So, you yeah, psychology and empathy are just two things that I don't think we talk a lot about in finance, but they are so intertwined and connected. Um, and it's great. And again, kind of going back to um, themes earlier, but that is one of the things that drew me here. Um, I, I told you, Annie and Julie, when we first talked um, that um, 
there is a warmth here that I've never experienced, that I've never seen at any sort of financial institution in general. Um, and that was definitely something that drew me in because um, my background, again, has, has been at the, at the larger firms before, and that's usually ultra high net worth institutions, um, all of these, these big, big things. But um, there's the vast majority of Americans and the vast majority of us that don't fall into that bucket that deserve that same intention, deserve that same opportunity to be able to create some generational wealth or just create some freedom to, to do what they want, take a vacation or, or buy that new house or help someone in college. So there's so much um, with empathy and psychology here that um, I take with me because it just helps me do my job better and it helps me to be able to really understand how to kind of get us to that next level. Oh, I love it. <laughs> it just, it just makes me like so excited that this is a level that people can experience, that the our investors can experience inside the context of finances and investing yeah. and money mm -hmm. and this world that is so has so many beliefs around it or walls or barriers and that, um, you know, what could we all do with our financial future, with our generational legacy, anything like that, if we're able to have this type of translation service between like what's happening out there, but, but a real and honest version of that, not sort of a placation version of that. Right. And I just want to pull out for the, for the viewers here that, you know, what this means for you is that we'll never treat you as just a number. We'll never just treat you all the same. Every single one of you is unique and different and has a different um, outlook and different goals. You know, I studied psychology in college and so it's always been a passion of mine. And I find it so fascinating that two people with the exact same amount of money can have an entirely different outlook on their money and spending habits and investing and their goals. And I think that's what you're trying to get at here is that no two people are exactly the same. Even if both are accredited and both have the same net worth, their situations are completely unique. Their family situations are unique. And so that's how you approach it is that every person is, as you said, we're just humans at the end of the day. It's just one person trying to help another person. Yeah, yeah. And, and on top of that, I just kind of um, jogged a memory. I, I was uh, speaking, I had some calls yesterday and someone said, um, I, I know we're not your biggest investor, you know, and that struck a chord with me because it shouldn't matter if you're the biggest or the smallest, you should have the exact same experience. You should have the exact same agency to ask questions, to get help. Um, I know I'm, I'm working through responses and, and getting back to people and trying to kind of start that so we can get to a different place um, of uh, more proactive com communication, which I know is coming up next with things like that. But just kind of wanted to touch on that point of you're not just a number and it, it's OK if you just have that 10,000 or if you have hundreds of thousands, you should still feel like you can come to me, talk to any of us, um, ask a question or just need me to help you know, walk you through the portal. It's, it's no question or no ask for me is too small. And I, I love that about our team in general. Um, it's a, a all hands on deck approach all the time. And, you know, I think that also translates into how we want to engage with our investors. Oh, that story brought a tear to my eye. Oh. <laughs> I'm not even our biggest investor. <laughs> I was going to say know, the same I thing. Mean, I'm like, I, I put $10,000 into the last yeah. fund. And yeah. that's who we're most yeah. passionate about is helping people at the very beginning or the early on, getting those wheels turning, getting this started. And that's what makes the biggest difference in that overall wealth trajectory. Yeah. Well, let's jump into proactive communication and responsiveness. Mm -hmm. um, tell us a little bit more about why this has risen to the top of the things that you value most as director of investor relations. Yes, I think for everyone here, that is, that's the biggest thing, you know, in terms of whether it's good news, bad news, no news, being able to proactively communicate and just respond to some of those um, inquiries or just to a question is important, right? Um, silence is, it, it leaves too much to the imagination and, and doesn't give us the opportunity to connect and kind of touch base to even just, you know, calm the initial fear or panic or anxiety. So um, that's something that I, I is now at the very top of my list and just trying to kind of go through inquiries that have been out there or people that have scheduled meetings with me, even though it's been a few days in, it's still 
really important for me to hear those concerns, get that feedback. And, and I'm a person that so long as we are communicating respectfully with each other, tell me the bad, tell me how you really feel, tell me what we could be doing better or what you've experienced somewhere else. Because um, everyone, I would say, um, on our team wants to hear what can we be doing better, you know? So knowing that proactively communicating, even in the areas where we may not have all the answers, um, is something that is valued, I know, for myself as, as an investor and as a person, and I, and I know for our community as well. And then just even in the, in the scenarios like where I am now, where I'm a few days in, so there's still so much that I'm learning and knowing but just to be able to respond and say, I am looking into this or um, I'm getting some answers back. And, and it, it may be a little slow right now because I'm coming through, but um, it, it's just incredibly paramount um, to just, again, going back to maintaining that trust and that integrity. People want to hear that their voice is being heard and that they're being acknowledged. I love it. I love it all. <laughs> I, I I can't wait for this this like what you bring to really just infiltrate into to every one of our investors. I hope every single one of you can have a call with Ariel at some point, even if you don't think that you have any questions for her, but just get to know her, get to know what potentially she can do for you. What we, you know, we all want to be here for you as far as learning what is that next level in your sort of wealth building journey. How can you evolve to the next stage? You know, whether that's investing more money, but also just like being at peace with having invested your money and waiting until the next time you can invest. And like, what can you do in this middle middle ground um, of to be able to improve your life? And I think that having these stewards with us is a big deal. I see I see a lot of people out there who are, are um, promoting sort of the do it yourself version of financial independence and freedom through um, whether that's just kind of broad based index fund investing or getting rid of their advisors and all these kinds of things. And I think that they're missing a lot of the community aspect of that. Um, I think they're missing a lot of the wisdom and support and the incur, you know, what that can do for, for you as the individual investor, what that little piece of of interaction can do for your next day, your next week, and how that can evolve your journey to somewhere that you may not have have um, dreamed possible. So I kind of hear all of that wrapped up in, in the type of thing you're saying. I'm so excited for Good Egg to be going in this direction. Ariel, you are, we're just excited to have you on the team. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. And I want to just reiterate what Susan, what you were just saying that, you know, even if, if you're listening to this and you're like, you know, I don't have any concerns right now. I don't have any questions right now, but it doesn't matter. I would say reach out to Ariel anyway. I mean, look how cool she is. <laughs> Come on. And like, who wouldn't want a friend who's this savvy in all things related to investing so that when you do have those questions, then it's not, you're not trying to get to know Ariel and trying to get your concerns and addressed and your questions answered take the time now and just reach out have a friendly conversation i wish we were all in the same place so we could sit down for coffee but this is the next best thing and we're going to give you the link so you can schedule a call with ariel here in a bit but yes do that. just kind of reiterating that please do reach out um like to annie's point even if it's just having morning, morning coffee and just wanted to say, Hey, you know, I love that, you know, or if it's, I have a lot of issues and I would like someone to hear them, you know, everything in between, um, I'm here for you and, um, want to make, make sure that we continue to be, um, connected and engaged and that, you know, that my door is always open. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, wrapping this up, we will point you towards if you are looking to invest, we have a couple of funds still open. Um, our crown club asset is the multifamily apartment building inside this growth fund three. This is really exciting because this is the phone. This is the offering that we have been searching for for the past several years. The avenue to be able to allow more people at earlier stages of investing or coming together as a group, non-accredited investors and accredited invest, um, but specifically with potentially lower minimum amounts. So the $10,000 investment level really helps people get started investing in real estate earlier. You don't have to save up for a down payment to invest in real estate. You can do it through growth funds. Um, 
So this is still open um, for probably a limited amount of time. As soon as we close on this asset, this, this will close. Um, it's about half full, I would say, capacity-wise, uh, maybe a little bit more. Actually, those are those numbers are a couple of weeks old. So, um, so let us know if you have any questions there. Um, these are the projected returns for that. Again, this is all based on a hypo you know, hypothetical projected scenario, but our um, you know, year one, year two, year three, year five, and a total equity multiple of almost 2x in this market is really hard to find. So um, I suggest you dive into this asset and look. Um, this asset is also inside our Good Egg Wealth Fund too. This is for our accredited investors with a minimum of $50,000. And this is investing in both our Encore multifamily property in Orlando, Florida, as well as this Crown Club asset in Winston-Salem, which has just been identified as one of the most the top emerging markets in the country. So we're so excited that we found this asset there. Um, it's a great way with two balancing assets that really kind of play off each other's strengths really, really well inside this fund. So take a look at that. Um, we will probably be closing this fund in the next couple of weeks or, or uh, moving forward to the next step. This is our track record. These are numbers are a few months old, but we've brought in over 150 crowdfunding investors. That means a lot of those are those early stage investors. And I think about the ripple effects of building wealth at these earlier stages. I know for myself and my family to be getting higher returns earlier on and sort of snowballing our wealth is going to free up ourselves a lot more to create what we want to create in this world to serve the people we want to serve as individuals so that's what i see in that number um but you know you can look at all of those we've had a, a, a smaller amount of hold time in the past because in the market cycle we do typically hold assets for about five years that's our projected hold time these days um, so it's a little bit less in the assets that we've already taken full cycle we've sold on already just due to market conditions and then finally, it's easy to invest. We hope you can always reach out to us um, at investorrelations at goodegginvestments.com. I'll put that up on the screen in a second. Um, but learn, we, we, we really strive to provide you as much education as you possibly could use or need to be able to have confidence in this type of real estate investing because it really has been inaccessible to most people in the past because there is this sort of imposter syndrome effect of like, well, only the ultra high net worth people can invest in this type of real estate. But we're really trying to bring it back to being able to have everyday investors in here. And that means helping you learn all about the process. So we're here for you if you have questions at any time. We really value that. You can also come to our weekly popovers, just casual style chats. Those are on Tuesday mornings um, at 11 o'clock Pacific time. And those allow you to just ask whatever questions on the top of your head right now. Oop. The, the photo there is covering us up, but the investor relations at goodegg.com, at goodegginvestments.com. You can also see a phone number there, and that's going to go directly to our, our team. If you leave a message, we try to get back to you within 24 hours. So thank you so much for attending. Annie, do you have any other words of wisdom as we end our session here? You start with tech issues, you end with tech issues. I <laughs> mean, <laughs> but um, hopefully, you know, our goal with um, this particular Good Egg Live Masterclass was not to fill your head with all sorts of numbers and charts and data and everything about investor relations or investments or the, the market cycle. We, there's a time and a place for that. Um, but it, hopefully in this session, you got to see a little bit of a little bit of Ariel's heart, really, and who she is as a person. And that's what's most meaningful to us is, you know, there's there's tons of people out there who have a lot of investment knowledge and a lot of people who could sit in this seat. But the reason that we brought Ariel on to the team was because she aligns so well with the brand and the, the goals and the essence of who we are and what we embody. And so I'm so excited for each of you to meet her. Um, I apologize that the link is probably covered up there, but you can go to goodegginvestments.com slash schedule and you can find Ariel's um, scheduling link. You can schedule a quick 15 minute call with her, have a cup of coffee, ask her a few questions. Doesn't even have to be about investments. You can ask her about her dog and I'm sure she would love that um, but Ariel we're thrilled to welcome you to the community I know our investors are going to love you they already do and uh, we're so excited for everything that you're going to bring to uh, to this community thank you so much and um, 
I'm super excited to be here. I'm super excited to talk to all all of our investors and get to know everyone and I'm um, just looking forward to the future and what we have going on here. So thank you and uh, looking forward to joining the next live. <laughs>